Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson, BamaInsider.com. I'm actually coming to you from Santa Fe, New Mexico, uh, here for the holidays, back and visiting my hometown, uh, my family, my friends, my mom, my dad, etc. Happy to be here. I think there's a lot to talk about going into the Citrus Bowl, so I wanted to jump on real quick and provide some commentary. I'm going to talk about every single position going into the holiday season, and of course, our staff will be in Orlando, Florida, for the Citrus Bowl. We'll also be in Orlando for the Under Armour All-American game. So lots to cover, tons of coverage coming your way on BamaInsider.com. Leading off with the quarterbacks, I think when you look at this overall group, um, there's a lot to talk about. And I think we have to start out with Bryce Young being the new quarterback signee for the Alabama Crimson Tide. And what exactly does it mean? Well, as you know, it's a monumental pickup for the Crimson Tide just because you have a quarterback coming in from the class of 2020 who is a five star and this guy has it all i think when you look at a quarterback like bryce young he has an ability to extend plays he has that escapability that you want to see in your quarterback and and especially the present day of college football you want a quarterback who can elude defenders right keep his eyes downfield and make the big throw and i think that's exactly what bryce young provides in his skill set right i think he's a great pickup and i think he's a player that is going to emulate exactly what Nick Saban and Steve Sarkeesian want going forward in terms of being that community leader, being that player who has the ability to make a difference, not only on your program, but off the field, being a spokesman for the university, just how Jalen Hurts, just how Tua Tonga Valoa, and just how Mac Jones have displayed that character, character and charisma off the field. I think that's very important. And I think that's an important quality that Nick Saban wants on his roster. As we look at the quarterback room overall, I think the major storyline is, is Tua Tungvaloa going to leave or is he going to return for the 2020 season? As you know, he just tweeted, decisions, decisions. And I get it. I mean, in Todd McShay's latest mock draft, Todd McShay has him as a top five pick. And I think I mean, it all goes back to leaving money on the table. Can Tua Tungabailoa really surpass a multi-million dollar deal that'll be coming his way if he's a top 10 pick? I think the simple answer to that is no. So we've seen him zipping around on his motorized scooter. He's in good spirits. He's with the team. He's a great team leader. That's something that Tua and his council are going to have to sit down, talk about, talk about with Nick Saban, in my opinion. I still don't feel Tua can pass up that opportunity on the flip side. If he wants to come back, get healthy, and take advantage of Alabama's medical rehab, then, I mean, I I don't think you can go wrong either way. I mean, who's to say that he can't come back for the 2020 season and not play, still take that year to develop, and then come back for the 2021 draft and be eligible for the draft? Right. I mean, you're going to have some other quarterbacks in that mix. You have Trevor Lawrence coming out. He might go ahead of Tua, but now you're looking at Tua as a number two quarterback. Something to think about. Other quarterbacks on the roster, as you know, it'll be Mac Jones leading the Crimson Tide going into the game against Michigan. Mac Jones has done a good job. I mean, this season he's thrown for 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns, three interceptions. And I think what he's displayed has been the ability to make plays. I think he's shown that the team – likes his leadership the team likes to follow this guy and i think he could be the quarterback going into next year i know a lot of people want to see bryce young jump in there i know a lot of people want to see talia tungavailoa jump in there but mac jones is way ahead of those guys he's got a lot of athleticism he's the fastest quarterback in the room right now um so i think coming in bryce young from what i've heard has got to put on some weight mac jones is the guy who knows the playbook so i think going into the springtime you're going to have Mac Jones as that starter. Now, if Tua comes back, it's going to complicate things in the quarterback room. But I don't think it's a bad problem to have if you have Tua Tungvaloa coming back. With Mac Jones already being graduated from the University of Alabama, that gives him options. It gives him plenty of options. He can look at what's going to happen with the quarterback position at Alabama. Maybe he doesn't win the position. Maybe Talia rises up. Maybe a sleeper like Paul Tyson rises up. Maybe it's Bryce Young who comes in and he wins the quarterback job. Well, Mac Jones has options being he's a graduate. He can now transfer to any university that he wants to. And I think he should take those opportunities. You know, if he cannot start at Alabama, then he's going to start somewhere else. Just like we've seen uh, quarterbacks in the past transfer from Alabama. And I think when you look at the overall room, one of those quarterbacks has to leave. 
And if Mac Jones stays and Tua leaves, I think the quarterback who could possibly transfer out could be Talia Tungvalu. So we'll let, there's a lot to track going forward, a lot to speculate on. But right now, you have Mac Jones leading this team into the Citrus Bowl against Michigan. All right, let's um, move on to the running backs. Najee Harris, as you know, will play in the Citrus Bowl. I'm not really surprised. I mean, this is a guy who's been really trending upward into uh, the later part of the season. I think he's a guy who's certainly going to be a round one or round two draft pick. Will he leave in the 2020 season? He hasn't announced that. But I think when you look at what he has in terms of a talent perspective, how can he come back for the 2020 season? I think he's a guy... Um, you know, who has the ability to make an impact in the NFL, six foot two, 230 pounds. So let's just, uh, you know, that's something that we're going to have to track going forward. But I, in my opinion, as I've said before, I, I just can't see Najee Harris returning for the 2020 season. I don't think that's a bad thing for Alabama when you look at all the running backs that they signed. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, but returning this week was Trey Sanders, the five-star freshman who suffered a foot injury earlier in the season. He looked good, looked very good, looked crisp. He missed the later part of this week. He was on the stationary bike. I don't think it's going to be too serious. Nick Saban said that he doesn't expect him to play in the Citrus Bowl, um, but, but it is good news in terms of his long-term ability. I think he's going to come back for the springtime, and you know he has a shot to win that overall running back spot. You got Brian Robinson, be curious to see Brian Robinson and Trey Sanders uh, battle for that starting position. You have to also throw in Killen Robinson. You also have to look at Jerome Ford. I mean, that's a crowded running back room. And then Alabama also has added three running backs to the roster. Roy Dell Williams, Kyle Edward, Jace McQuillan, who was the flip from Oklahoma to Alabama. So a lot of running backs, a lot of talented running backs for Alabama on that roster. And, and that's good. I mean, that's a good thing. Competition makes that the, the cream rise, as you know, so a lot of guys coming back with a lot of talent should Najee Harris go to the 2020 draft, which I expect him to. Um, let's talk about the wide receivers and Jerry Judy. Um, let's start with him. Jerry Judy coming back and playing in the Citrus Bowl. I'm, not, I'm really not surprised. I, I knew a couple guys wouldn't play in the Citrus Bowl, but I didn't think Jerry Judy would be one of them. Yeah, he's a top five pick, but Jerry Judy has said time and time again, I mean, he loves football. It's all he thinks about. It's not a, you know, it's, it's, it's his craft, but it's something that he does as a hobby. This is something that he was born to do. So I'm not really surprised to see Jerry Judy returning to play in the Citrus Bowl. He's been working hard. We've, we've seen him at practice. Um, looks like Devontae Smith still coming off some sort of nagging injury, but it looks like he's been making some progress going in. Him and Ruggs, I'm, I'm curious to see if those guys do return for the 2020 season. I think they would be drafted in, in the 2020 NFL draft. But if they return, you're talking about these guys being first-round draft picks, which, which who knows? They, they very well could, depending on, you know, if they go and they have a strong combine showing. I, I think they obviously have elite speed and elite ability to create plays. But just, you know, um, a lot of decisions to be made during the holiday season and after the Citrus Bowl, especially in that wide receiving room. Um, another guy that... Um, you know, we'll be curious to see if he carries that momentum from the game against Auburn into the Citrus Bowl as Jalen Waddell. You're talking about one of the most explosive players in all of college football. I mean, what he did against Auburn was spectacular. I think this is a guy who certainly needs the football more and more. The more times he gets the football, the better. And uh, there's a lot of younger wide receivers that are, you know, still looking to cut their teeth. You have John Mechie. You have Terrell Shavers. You have Slade Bolden. You have Xavier, Xavier Williams. Um, a lot of talented wide receivers itching to play. And, um, you know, depending on the shakeup at the wide receiver position, who goes to the draft, you're going to start to see a lot of these names start to rise up. Um, Alabama has a lot of talent in that wide receiving room. At the tight end position, Miller Forrestal as, is back uh, after that voice box injury. And I think that's a great that's a great ad for Alabama. He's a guy, you know, you, you look at the tight end position and you say maybe it, it might not matter because Alabama is so talented at other positions, but it matters. Miller Forrestal is a guy that provides veteran leadership. Um, he's a leader of this team. He gets that second level, puts a hat on the, the linebackers, open up those holes for the running back. And then, as you know, Alabama has been recruiting 6'7", 250-pound tight end Darnell Washington. Washington, according to Andrew Bone, could make that decision um, you know, between January and February if Alabama lands up with Darnell Washington. I mean, that's going to be a slam dunk for this recruiting class. If they don't get him, I don't think it's absolutely a, 
um, an end all because you have Jahil Billingsley, who I do like. So, uh, and, and you probably like him already as well. We've seen splashes of him. He's that guy that can provide a lot of versatility because he's a tight end who's a receiving tight end who can come in. Um, you can split him out wide even. I think he's that versatile of a player. So Miller Forrestal will be back for 2020, and so will Jahil Billingsley. So I think Alabama's good from a tight end uh, perspective. On the offensive line, no no real news to report. Um, you know, Leatherwood, Neil Dickerson, Brown, Wills Jr., all those guys are going to start in Citrus Bowl. I would I would assume that Wills and Leatherwood um, have an opportunity to play in the NFL. That's Those are some other guys that we're tracking to see if they do declare for the draft. Those guys are very talented. Bookends for Alabama, a lot of talent. Um, only three offensive linemen added to this class 2020 um, for whatever reason. Damian George, uh, who's our six foot seven, three hundred and forty five pound offensive tackle, is yet to sign. Um, Saban said um, there's a couple guys that have signed. They've just, for whatever reason, they've asked Alabama not to release that information. So, no real reason to think he won't be in this class. But he's a guy that, I mean, obviously he has a monumental size. Can you imagine? Him, six foot seven, three hundred and forty-five pounds. Evan Neal, six foot seven, three hundred and sixty pounds. I mean, these are some monsters on that offensive line. So Alabama is going to be just fine on the offensive line for years to come. Uh, the defensive line, as you've read from our team reports by Tony Sukalis, uh, DJ Dell still um, not at practice, dealing with a nagging knee injury. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to go against Michigan. So look for guys like Federi Mathis and Christian Barmore to get more playing time against Michigan, which I think is a great thing. Christian Barmore playing like a man on fire towards the end of the season. And I think um, we haven't seen what Federi Mathis can do. And I think from a skill set perspective, I think he's a guy that can also get after the quarterback, can also stop the running backs, clog up the middle of the field. Raekwon Davis is playing in the Citrus Bowl. Um, he'll also be playing in uh, the senior game. And I'm curious to see if Raekwon Davis ends up being a uh, first round, second round draft pick. I mean, you got to like a size, right? Six foot seven, 315 pounds. Um, also, LeBron Ray is back at practice. Um, he dealt with a nagging foot injury, didn't play the majority of the season. But with him back, I think that um, add some advantage to Alabama's defensive line. Is he going to play against Michigan? Is he just getting reps? I guess we'll have to see, right? And that's something that we'll be tracking during our Citrus Bowl coverage. Um, Alabama also secured and signed Tim Smith, six foot three, 315 pound defensive tackle out of Sebastian, Florida. Monster pickup. It's very important to get defensive tackles inside the program. As you know, they're a commodity. Um, it's not easy to get big defensive tackles. So Alabama securing Tim Smith is a really big pickup. And we're also tracking the development of Ismail Sopcher. He's another big guy um, in the middle of the field, another defensive tackle that Alabama wants to get on the field um, during the 2020 season. Big boy, six foot three, 340 pounds, monster of a man. At the inside linebacker position, um, Big news came out uh, just on Friday, December 20th, when Joshua McMillan announced that he was granted a medical redshirt, that he will be back for the 2020 season. He also announced that he uh, graduated with an engineering degree. So incredible news for um, Alabama's Joshua McMillan. What a story. It'd be uh, really exciting to see him come back. That adds a lot of depth to Alabama at the inside linebacker position for the 2020 season. I mean, Shane Lee, Christian Harris, only only freshman this year starting for Alabama, and then you have a veteran coming back. And also, we've seen Dylan Moses with the team practicing. He's been working out. Is he going to play in the Citrus Bowl? Is he working out? I don't know. He has his pads on. We've seen him with a uh, helmet and shoulder pads. So uh, maybe he's just getting ready for the draft. Is he going to come back? It's something we're also tracking, uh, the status of Dylan Moses. But can you imagine if he came back for the Citrus Bowl? Um, man, that would just be a big boost to this Alabama defense, right? Uh, he's a guy with just elite talent, um, really fast linebacker, 4'5", four, 4'4", four, four guy. Uh, could he go in the NFL draft? Yeah, absolutely. If he's healthy enough, yeah, he could. But could he come back for 2020? Yeah, he definitely could. Um, outside linebackers, Terrell Lewis, as you know, is not playing. He's foregoing the bowl game to work on the – um, his own skill set to get ready for the 2020 draft. But surprisingly, he is playing in the Senior Bowl. How do you guys feel about that? What do you think about Terrell Lewis? Do you think he's a first-round pick? Probably, right? 6'5", 250 pounds, um, amazing skill set. Giant wingspan, um, can get after the quarterback. I, I would certainly like him on my team, right, if you're looking at the NFL. Um, so you're probably going to see Christian 
Um, Christopher Allen Playmore at the outside linebacker position. I, I think he's a guy that people should really be excited about. I think he has an ability to get to the quarterback as well. So you have Anthony Jennings and Chris Allen playing at that outside linebacker position. Uh, Trayvon Diggs at the corner position also announced that he's not playing, so look for Josh Job to step up in his place. And with Alabama signing Ronald Williams at the corner position, I think it's going to be interesting to see in the springtime who earns that corner position because you have Patrick Sertan, uh, who started for the last two seasons, and you have Josh Job. And I think depending on his play against Michigan, that will solidify his position going forward, right? Because you have Ronald Williams coming in, and anytime you have a junior corner, a junior college corner coming in, they're not coming to to ride the pine. They're coming to play. So Ronald Williams coming in, he was a junior college All American. Looks like he's going to be fighting for that corner spot with Josh Job going forward. Uh, Scooby Scooby Carter still absent from practice. Um, he was in the transfer portal. Um, then, from what we heard, uh, him and Nick Saban had a sit down. Not sure how that went. Um, a lot of people speculating different things. We don't know exactly what's going on. So is Scooby Carter still with the program? Not sure. Do know he is still in the transfer portal. Um, Jaquez Robinson, who's a corner out of the class of 2020, already on campus, already getting reps at the Crimson Tide. Lastly, as we look at the special teams, a lot of you ask, why didn't Alabama sign a kicker? Right? And it's like a head scratcher. Well, the reason is Alabama has a kicker already. That's Will Reichard. Um, he was out of the class in 2019. He was injured, dealt with a hip flexor, hip flexor injury um, this season. But he's the guy that Nick Saban wants kicking the football. He's the guy that is going to be Alabama's place kicker going forward. So they have their kicker. That's why they didn't sign a kicker for the class 2020. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks for following us and all our coverage right here on BamaInsider.com. The next time we talk will probably be um, from Orlando, Florida. We'll be there for the Citrus Bowl and the Under Armour All-American game. Coming to you from Santa Fe, New Mexico, Kyle Henderson, BamaInsider.com. Thanks for following. Appreciate it. Be sure and like and subscribe. We'll catch you soon, BamaInsider.com.